And it's like I've turned the mic on okay. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I think you'd probably hear me even without it, wouldn't you? <laughs> so it's lovely to be here, albeit in a different um, capacity today. But I hope you can accept me as I am anyway. Um, I just really want to draw our attention to the, the booklet because I've really looked at this for the very first time properly. Um, I don't know if we ever deeply look at things. Um, normally I pick it up and I'm just straight into um, the second side of I was just really contemplating this wonderful picture that Julie has put on the front. And I don't know if you know how um, lucky you are to have people that can actually illustrate things for you. And though it's a simple picture of those fish, it must have taken ages to get the symmetry right. And I think there's just something lovely in the, the shared um, togetherness of preparing things for church. So I really just want to celebrate the book. Um, and if we can just begin by sharing the first prayer on the inside cover together. Lord, you are the fullness of life, of holiness and of joy. Fill our days and nights with the love of your wisdom, that we may bear fruit in the beauty of holiness, like a tree watered by running streams. Amen. Amen. And so grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And so we have a moment just to bring before God those things that we have done that have marred his image in us. So let's hold a moment of silence as we just think about those things that have made us complaining in the week, not as generous perhaps as we could have been, not as loving, not as thoughtful. And so we acknowledge that we all do things wrong. But we also acknowledge that we sit in the grace of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Therefore, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. And so we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. And so let's stand as we join with all the angels of heaven and say out the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so, gracious God, receive your church in our day and make her holy, strong and faithful for your glory's sake. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so please remain standing if we're hearing the gospel reading as we hear um, Chris come forward to share the reading of the day with us. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Peter says, says Jesus is the Messiah. When Jesus came to the reign of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples, who, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, the son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O O Christ. Christ. Please sit down. And as we start, Lord, thank you for the privilege of being able to impart your word this morning. Amen. In our home, we have several paintings and pictures of churches. They all have a special meaning to Christine and I, and um, if I go through them, you'll perhaps understand. The first is a photograph. It's a photograph taken in the early 20th century and it's of the house in which I was born. And behind it is the village church in which I was baptised three weeks later. So that's the first church. The second one is the chapel in which uh, I went, to which I went as a boy up to the age of 18 when I left home. The third one is the church of, so it's called Christ Church, and it's in Port Sunlight, and it's a Congregationalist church built by Lord Leverhulme for his workers at the local factory. Christine and I were married in that church. It's like a perishing cathedral. It's enormous. And the fourth one is here. I've got a painting of St. Martin's, and it was done by one of the members of the local artist society. Um, I can't remember his name, to be quite honest. It's written on it, but I, I, I can never remember it. But this morning, I thought I'd bring one of them as a visual aid. And that is the chapel to which I went as a child up to the age of 18. It's special because one of the people who helped to build it was my great-grandfather. And in fact, in 1880, he and other members of the family um, built that chapel just short of the highest point of the village. The highest point of the village is 920 feet. And from that point, you can look out across the massive Cheshire Plain, and on a really good day, you can even see Liverpool. It's, it's quite a, a, an area. That chapel was well into existence when my grandmother was born in 1885. And some 40 years later, they added schoolrooms to the side. They were built of brick. 
and on three of those are the initials of my mum, my auntie and my uncle. They each bought a brick. In the area there are other Methodist chapels and there's a chapel of ease uh, from a different parish church. But even before those local churches were built, the area was used for religion because it's very high and it's rocky and it's dry and people used to meet there for their services and learn about, uh, about the Bible and about the, uh, the stories. And as if to reinforce that everything around us was rock, and by the way, the rock is millstone grit, which is a very hard and durable rock, and it was used for millstones. But if you remember um, a hymn that we used to sing there, and it was Rock of Ages by Augustus Toplady. Now, you may know the story of it, but basically, Toplady was a preacher in a place called Blagdon, I think, or it may be pronounced Bladen, it, the funny and the Mendy Pills. And he was walking one day in Burrington Cove, Coombe rather, and it started to pelt down. So he hid in the, a rock, and he came up with the hymn, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure, cleanse me from its guilt and power. That was quite a favourite hymn up there. And I've always wondered what he was alluding to. And I think it was to this verse in Matthew, where Jesus says to Peter, you're the rock on which I'm going to build my church. But then I thought about it. I know Peter was important. And he certainly built the early Christian church. He built it on the words of Jesus and the prophets. But I think the true foundation of our church is Jesus himself. Because without Jesus sacrificing himself, going to the cross and then rising again, we would not have a religion of faith. So without Jesus as our foundation, that's great. We can't do anything without a foundation. But sometimes, and you can see it around Park Hall area, you can see it in various places in Walsall, there are foundations of houses. Nothing on them, just foundations. And in the Bible, Jesus also referred to foundations. In Matthew chapter 7, a bit earlier on, he talked about people putting his words into practice. They're being like a builder who built his house on solid rock. No matter what happened, it stood. And people who don't take any notice of his words, like builders who build their houses on sand, no matter what they do, when the wind and the rain come, they get washed away. So foundations are great. You've got to build on them. So what do we build on them? Now our forefathers built on them by their tremendous faith in Jesus Christ. Are we doing the same? Our challenge, therefore, is to decide and to try and implement the faith that we have and explain it to other people. Unless we work to use the faith in Christ to build his church, this is not his church, this is a building. We are his church. It is by our faith that it grows. And if we're going to continue to grow the kingdom, our challenge is to work to show our faith out there amongst the community. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John, for a, a, a great word of encouragement to us to use our faith as we should. And we thank God for your wisdom and your um, insight into the, the gospel readings. So let's stand as we profess our faith together. And let's really take these words um, to heart, thinking about what John has said this morning. 
So we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so let's be seated as we pray. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the quiet times that we can come and share together. We thank you for the intimacy of the holy sacraments. We thank you that you are God and you are here in the midst of us right now. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be gracious to us and give us the keys to your kingdom that we may be the one that could unlock the gospel truth for another. Help us to really take our faith out into our daily lives, into the streets and workplace, wherever we are, Lord. Give us all that we need to open doors and build your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the Holy God, we thank you for churches everywhere, Anglican churches, Baptist churches, Methodist churches, congregational churches, URC, all churches, Lord, wherever there is a heart raised to worship you, we pray for that place that you would fill each corner of those places with your Holy Spirit, with your love, your joy, your hope and your peace, that they may become beacons of light for this dark world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Holy God, we pray for those who are in darkness at this time. We pray for those who are struggling with pain, anxiety, with grief, with abuse, neglect, those who are living in places of violence and war. Oh God, bring your people back to their right minds, we pray, and help us in our part to do all that we can to show your compassion and love in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we just gather together all that we are, all of the fragmented pieces, all of the brokenness, the hurt, the joys, the sorrows, the laughter, the tears. 
all that we are, Lord. Just in this moment of silence, we place it at the throne of grace. And we ask that you touch us again with your great love. Renew us and revive us and send us out from this place. Committed and determined to do your will and to serve you as we should. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we close our prayers, Lord God, we think of Jenny, her mom and dad and the children. And we pray that whatever they're doing right now, they would receive a blessing from you. And know deep in their hearts that someone prays for them today. Give them a relaxing beautiful time away together and bring them back safe and refreshed. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to admit a wrongdoing because Jenny told me just to use the bread today. I've gone a bit wayward and we're having the wine as well. So if you're watching Jenny, I apologise. <laughs> so Fung was playing some beautiful music earlier. Would you like to just play a little bit of that now? Come straight from the heart, he tells me. Nothing prepared. So the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. 
On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup of wine and again he praised you. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this then as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross and bringing before you this bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And let's say the next prayer together. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. So as Jesus, our Saviour, taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
And so let's pray the prayer of communion together, after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and to work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so as we anticipate a busy weekend um, coming up, may the quiet spaces that we've shared this morning be ones that we can return to in the hidden places of our heart. Um, John was talking about Rock of Ages, the hymn, and it says, let me hide myself in thee. And you know, we can always, in the busiest of moments, in the busiest of days, Find places where we can indeed hide ourselves in God. Maybe that's looking at some, something that we see that's beautiful in creation, or whether it's just sitting down for a few minutes and observing the world passes by without being involved. Those quiet spaces, may they feed you spiritually on the inside in the weekend and the week ahead. And so as we prepare to go our separate ways now, I say thank you to Fung for his beautiful um, music, which I think is very lovely. And literally, it's even made even better because it's just flowing out of your, your heart and soul. Isn't that just nice that people can do that? I just think that is so wonderful, letting the Holy Spirit just work through your, your fingers. And so that's what we pray. We pray that the Holy Spirit would work through our fingers, maybe not as musically beautifully as um, Fung, but we can still do God's work with our fingers in many different ways, can't we? So, as we go, may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. And all those you love, care for and pray for on earth and in heaven, this day and always. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>